Hey guys and welcome back to another video tutorial. Now on the last one we took a look on how to use an Android TV box like this one here to create a media server or a file server so that we can share files across all our network and I will post a link right over here just in case you want to check that out because it might be useful for the video that uh, we are going to share today. Now today we are going a step up which is uh, to see how to create a Kodi server uh, to centralize all our media media collection. Now this will be useful especially for those of you that have a large movie or TV series uh, collection and also for those of you that use more than one device. So for example if you are watching a movie uh, on your living room and then you stop there and you want to keep on watching on your uh, bedroom or on your kitchen or wherever you want to go with your phone, with your tablet, with your computer, you want that Kodi uh, be able to remember where you left off. So that's what we are going to see today how easy it is to use uh, one device like this, an Android TV box, but you can also use any other device as long as it supports Kodi. That being said, let's go straight for this video. Hope as always that it's useful in some way and as always, I'll see you in a few seconds. Okay guys, so here we are for another tutorial and although this is intended for Android TV box users, you may do this with any other device. Now having in mind the goal of this video that is to help out those that have a large movie collection and use several devices at home and want to have everything synchronized across all devices without efforts. Now we will be using the ProBox 2 Air that we used on the last video to create a media server and assuming that this device will be used both for the movies and also the database but of course that we can use any other device at our choice. Now the first step is to open the Google Play Store on our Android TV box and search for PHP server. There will be a few and if you ask me which one is my favorite I would have to say KS web server but that is a paid app so we are going to use my second favorite which is PHP runner and this one is a free app so just press the install button and when ready just run the app. Now once we start the app we want to press the install button so that we can install the server services and after that we want to press download PHP my admin which usually will give us an open failed message so just go to the root folder button and change to the suggestion option. After that we can press the download PHP my admin and it will work just fine and once it finishes we can press the start button to start the server services and then press run php my admin to open the web interface now for those of you that have worked with databases for wordpress and so on this will be very familiar but for those of you that didn't don't worry as it will be very simple and although we can proceed to the next step on this box but just to see if everything is working fine we can check the IP address of the box and then on any computer on the network type the IP address followed by colon 8080-phpMyAdmin and we will have access to the phpMyAdmin interface from any device on our network. And all we have to do here is just to log in uh, with the default user which is root without password and once inside we will need to go to users press the add user button type Kodi as username and Kodi as password grant all privileges check all global privileges and press the button go now we have a new user named Kodi on our database and we can move on on the next step we will need to create a file called advanced settings xml so that we can tell Kodi that we have a server to centralize all info now there are two ways of doing this one of which is to create a text file but I prefer to grab an existing XML file and to do so we just need to know where those files are depending on our operating system which at this moment I'm using a Mac so I will need to go to users library application support Kodi user data and here I can just copy one of those XML files. And next I will just open that XML file with a text editor, copy the advanced settings code available on the Kodi wiki and 
paste it on the XML file. There will be two lines of code that we need to change with the IP address of our Android TV box running the PHP server. After that, we will need to rename the XML file to advanced settings. And that is it, guys. All we need to do next is to place this file on any device running Kodi. And depending on the operating system, the location will be different. And on my particular case, I also placed a copy of the XML file on my network attached storage or NAS, as you want to call it, so that I can easily copy it to any of my devices running Kodi. But you guys may use a USB drive or an SD card. Now for the Mac we have seen where to place this file so let's move on. And now moving to our Android TV box I will use the app ES File Explorer and once we install it we will need to open it of course, <laughs> select show hidden files, copy our XML file which in my particular case if you remember it's on my NAS and then go to Android org.xpmc.cody files Kodi and user data and there just paste the file and we can do the same with any other device that we have on our network and that we want to use with that Kodi server and as you guys can see I'm using the Xiaomi Mi Pad 2 and doing the exact same procedure. And finally, just to make sure that everything is working, we want to go to the PHP My Admin interface. And if we look at the screen, it only has two lines. But once we open Kodi on any machine that has the advanced settings XML file that we just changed, then it will create another two lines named My Music and My Videos. And guys, please don't change these names or it won't work. And now for the final step, all we need to do is to tell Cody exactly where my movies are. And to do so, I just need to go to the file section, add videos, then browse to where we have the movies. Uh, in my particular case, I'm using a network attached storage, but you might use an Android TV box as we have seen on the last video. Then once we select the folder, we need to select the content if we are using movies or TV series and bam, Kodi will search for the info and grab covers and all the movie information. Now, the great thing about this is that all our machines will be synchronized. Once we open Kodi on any other device that we have the XML uh, advanced settings, we will see the same content without any other changes in settings. And on the screen, you guys can see the Android TV box, my MacBook Pro and the Xiaomi Mi Pad 2. But you guys may use any device as long as it accepts Kodi. Now, the great thing about this setup is that if we want to start watching a movie on one device on our living room, for example, and then we shut it off and we want to keep watching on our bedroom in a different device, all the information will be synchronized on the database and will remember where we left off. Now, the same will happen for any other change. Let's say that we decide to delete the folder that contains all our movies. Then the next time that we open Kodi on any other device, the library will be empty as well. And to me, this is a great feature of Kodi. And on my example, we only had three movies. so It's very easy to keep track. But when we have a large library, it becomes very useful. And truth be told, that in the beginning will give us a bit of work. But once everything is set up, it is just great to have everything synchronized. And that is it, guys. Hope that this video tutorial was helpful in some way. And if it was, don't forget that usual thumbs up. My name is Roberto George. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.